Hello fellow Charters, welcome to my YouTube channel, I am D Charters, and today we have what I like to call a basing day, a basing day for the SPY, and what basing is pretty much, it just means choppy price action, uh, you know, choppy meaning sideways pri price action, possibly a bull flag, falling wedge, you know, if, if, if it's a bull trend in market, you know, you'll see some bull flags, some falling wedges, Maybe a triangle pattern, okay? So this is a daily chart of SPY, but if we go to a 30 minute, you can see, what is that? A falling wedge, all right? So this is what, if anybody that wonders, what is what is basing? Basing, this is what basing look like. Just choppy price action, going sideways in a channel, a flag, or a falling wedge, something like that, okay? And usually basing happens when, you know, like the SPY needs to build more strength for another leg higher, okay? Is it guaranteed to go another leg higher? Absolutely not. Nothing is 100%. So we always got to be prepared. But as you can see, look how many green candles we had, okay? Even on this day on the 20th, there, that, that, we had a long wick, okay? So there was a lot of buying pressure. And one, two, three, four green candles. And these are some decent side bodies. That's the market makers moving the stock. Uh, excuse me, the, the, the ETF. Okay. So after all these days of green, strong green move. I mean, it was as low as 451. And it went as high as 478.7, 4.8. All right. So when that happens, it's reasonable. For the stock, the ETF, or whatever you're trading, the Forex, to base a little bit. So it can gather strength to go to the upside, okay? Now, yesterday I talked about a 480 price target. I mentioned that in my Discord as well. 480 and 483 with support for SPY at 477 to 478. We also closed below the, 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 the critical support. Now it's a weak support. Uh, 474 to 474.5 will be a stronger support. At this point, 471 to 472 is a must hold. All right, because we are in breakout mode right now for SPY. We had a lot of breakouts that I spoke about yesterday with this orange line right here, yellow line right here. We're in breakout mode. So. You know, basing is fine, but we need that critical so the breakout level to hold. All right. So right now, I'm basing it on this blue support line. Make it a little longer. That's been serving as an equilibrium level for us since all the way back here in May. All right. So I use these these equilibrium lines as my support levels, my resistance levels depends. Right. So 471 to 472. Is a must hold level below that it'll most likely take out this yellow support line that was the breakout level or we'll head down lower that is when I would turn bearish but as long as it's holding I would look for buying or, or opportunities preferably off of one of our support levels okay whether it's a bounce off support or a recapture of support right now in the aftermarket we because we had support at 477 we closed 13 cents below it that's not too bad of a close and right now during the after hours we're back above that support all right this could be one of those days like i said basing we're just building strength but also from a non-technical perspective this could be a day where market makers are shaking out the weak hands maybe we was getting too you know happy people just buying in calls things is going to keep on going people catching fomo so they decided to, you know, let's chop a little bit today and knock out some of the weak hands. That's a possibility as well. I can't guarantee any of that. But, you know, common sense. All right. Because if you check to put the call ratio, there's a lot of calls coming in. You know. So that's a possibility as well. Okay. But I'm still bullish on the SPY. If it recaptures 477. It did in the after hour, but officially during the trading hour, I would buy it. I would buy off of 474 support 
and I will buy off of 471.5 to 472, okay? Below that, I would cut my loss, okay? You know a critical support level is lost when it drops down, take out the support, and then treat that same support as a resistant, and then it'll head down lower. That's how you know, guys. It's a process. Stock trading is boring. A lot of us want it to be fun, but it's really boring because it requires a lot of patience, sitting down and waiting and staring at your screen, or maybe you set up alerts, you know, but that's the process to know that you officially lost a critical support level. When it closes below and then it comes back and tests it, reject it, then it'll head down lower. That same rule applies for all, even the smaller time frames, okay? So, yes, we lost 477, not right now, but we did in the trading hours. Tomorrow, if it's op if it opens below 477 and then gold test 477 and gets rejected, it treated 477 as a resistant level. That's a sign that it'll go down lower, okay? If it opens above 477 and it treat and it bounces off 477, maybe it'll come down and test it might not as well, and it bounces off of that level, and it stays above, or it stays above that level. It's treating four seventy seven as support, or four seventy seven is a support because it's above. That's a sign of more upside, and maybe we'll possibly hit our price target of four eighty to finish out this megaphone pattern. Okay, but when a critical support is lost, and it gets tested as a resistant, then we play it to the next support level. You can, like me, sit in cash position and wait for support to get hit or get a recapture or you can switch and scalp it to the downside. Still managing your risk. Okay? So that's what I got for the SPY. Alright? If it opens below 477 and treats it like resistant, we'll look for the next support of 474. Alright? If it opens above 477 tomorrow... And treats it like a support by staying above it or bouncing from it. 480 is in play. That's my plan for SPY tomorrow. We take a look at the VIX. VIX is still looking bearish. As you can see, got a nice rejection. Sharp rejection from the 5-day moving average. And it's not much lower, but it's still technically lower than the previous candles. So the VIX is continuing to, to act bearish. And show us bearish price action. Okay? So a bearish VIX is a bullish SPY. It's always subject to change. You know, but we'll play it level by level. Moving on to Triple Q. Triple Q also had a big red day. It bounced off of, because it's also in breakout mode. It bounced off of the orange line right here. That's where the breakout level was. And showed a nice reaction. Not much, but it did show something. So we need follow through. Okay, so critical support is 401. We need follow through for tomorrow. Triple Q must continue to close and stay above 401. If it does, we're still going to have more upside. 408 first, possibly all the way up to 420. Okay, possibly. All right, but below 401, I'm going to switch over to bearish. Okay, because then that will be a false breakout. False breakouts are bearish. False breakdowns are bullish. So, uh, you know, take positions accordingly to your sentiment. And this is the Dow Jones. I have a lot going on. Dow Jones is above all moving averages. As you can see, I'll take it out. These are the Fib Fibonacci levels. So after the breakout of this blue trending line here, we had some follow through today and it closed even higher. Okay, it went as high as... Today went as high as 365. So it hit one of our price targets, but it quickly sold off a little bit, but it still closed above. So my next price target is 368 for the Dow Jones. Support will be down here at 362.6. And also for the breakout level of 361.7. As long as those two level hold, 368 is in play, and then possibly go higher to 371. Okay? Below 361.7. And if it closes, that's going to end up being a false breakout. And we can see more downside. Okay, guys? IWM. 
I alerted IWM in my Discord yesterday. We had a 225 price target. The reason was we had a breakout here. And then yesterday, it came down to test the breakout, as you can see, at 220.7. That was a critical support. And it went up even higher and closed right at the 200-day moving average. So that made me bullish until the next resistance level around 225, which is this white line right here. That's from this triangle pattern, the white and then the red line. That's triangle pattern. All right. As soon as it hit our price target, it went a little higher. And then it just sold off quickly. All right. Now, the good news is for bulls is that despite this little sell-off, it's still closing above the five-day moving average and above breakout level. I would be more bearish if the IWM closes below 219, okay? It closes below 219, you know, because I'm going to let the scenario play out. I'm going to let the price actor tell me what to do. In order for the price actor to tell us what to do, we need to see what it does first, okay? Because it talks to us by its action. So you got to see what it's going to do. So if it closes below 219, that's bearish, and it's telling us, hey, it's going to be more, another leg down. Okay, false breakout, another leg down. All right, but as long as that level holds, it's possible we go and test 225 again. And if we break it, 227, and then the big one up here at 232. All right, so that's what I got for IWM. Now today, I'm going to cover Tesla because crypto is not looking good. Ethereum just suck. Bitcoin just suck right now. You know, it's looking bearish. Not looking good. I haven't checked it for hours, but last time I checked, it wasn't looking that good. So I decided, let's talk about something where my viewers and members could make some money. All right? So we got this big bull flag here for Tesla. Big bull flag. All right? It hit our price target. I, I alerted Tesla for the last couple of weeks. We made some good money on Tesla. And uh, I think some of my members made money on Tesla too. But we had an 1115 price target. All right, it hit it. Okay, it went a little bit higher, 1117, but it hit our price target and it sold off. Today, it went a little higher, attempted a breakout, went as high as 1119, but then it sold off. Okay, now you got to understand, it went and back on the 21st, it was as low as 885. Then it went as high as 1119. That is a big jump. So seeing this sell-off today is not a big sell-off. Not nothing too serious. Because Tesla is very volatile. This is not a bad thing, okay? Especially with it closing just below the resistant level. Just like the SPY, Tesla looked like it's basing, okay? I would be more bull uh, bearish if Tesla closed below 1049. That's where the 50-day uh, moving average is. All right, if Tesla starts closing below the 50 day moving average, which is 1049 currently, I would be more bearish and I start betting to the downside, possibly back down to 905, 908, probably even lower, as low as 798 to the support line right here. Okay, but right now, all I'm seeing is that it's basing, and as long as it stays above 1049, above the 50 day moving average, the five day, which is this red line, will continue to creep up. And catch up okay then it won't be too overbought it's not it doesn't look over that overbought to me because look at these Bollinger Bands it's not like it's overstretched and you look at the RSI it is an overbought territory so yeah a cool off is fine for me I would look for buying opportunities off a of support level or I can wait for the breakout breakout level right now is 1108 1110 Okay, so Tesla above 1110, that would be very bullish and a breakout. And yes, I would buy the breakout. Still manage your risk, of course. Watch out for a false breakout, but I would buy the breakout. A lot of people say, don't buy the breakout. Wait for a retest of the breakout level. Well, I'd rather buy the breakout. And if it comes and retests, then I'll buy more. And if it holds, good. Let's make some money. If it breaks the support... Then guess what? I'll cut my loss. But guess what? I would buy the breakout. Especially with a stock like Tesla, okay? So remember, 11, 1110 is the breakout level. Above that, very bullish, I would buy the breakout. 
That's what I would do, guys. You don't have to copy me. I'm just saying that's what I would do. You guys got to make your own decision, okay? As long as it's above 1,049, above the 50-day, I will be looking for buying opportunities off of support. So we'll see what the five-day moving average ends up by tomorrow. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I will switch to bearish if it's below 1,049. All right, so I've been talking a little too much, maybe a little rep repetitive, but I hope you guys got the message today and got the technicals. All right, that is price action technical analysis. I thank you guys so much for watching. I still got the $1 for your first month deal coupon thingy. All right, all you got to do, to, uh, click on the link for launch pass, put in the coupon code CHARTIST05, that's a capital C, and you'll get your first month uh, just for a dollar and see what the fuss is about in discord up to you either that i'm so i'm so glad that you're here you're watching i hope you got something out of it and i'll see you all soon